Well, good evening. Wonderful, wonderful. Glad to see you here this evening. Uh, you are in for a treat. We are uh, going to try to get some of our uh, wonderful admirers of art in the room who are looking at all the wonderful pieces out there, and uh, there'll be plenty of time to do that. Uh, I want to tell you kind of how the evening is going. Actually, let me introduce myself if I haven't gotten to meet you. My name is Cody McQueen. I'm the lead pastor here at Christ Chapel. It's a wonderful privilege that I have to be a part of a great church family, and I'm so glad that you chose to be with us this evening. It's, it's going to be a treat. So the, what we're going to do this evening is uh, we're, this is the album release for the CCM department. So our contemporary team, they came together about a year ago and they started writing original songs on the Psalms. So they were writing them on the Psalms. They were taking a different Psalm. They would collaborate together, write a piece. They ended up writing about 18 songs. They're not gonna play all 18 for you tonight. Okay, so they're all, uh, not all of those 18, yeah, but they're going to play uh, five of those songs. Those are on the album that, that we're releasing. It's called uh, Lift My Eyes, and so that's what they're going to do. They're going to go through those five songs. They're going to tell you a little bit. Have you ever seen VH1 behind the music? Okay, that without all the raunchy stuff, Okay. They're going to tell you about how they came up with the songs, how they wrote it together, and uh, then they're actually going to perform it for you. It, these are incredible songs, super worshipful. They did a portion of this at our staff meeting on Tuesday. Everybody was blown away, and uh, I, I think you will be as well. Uh, but they want to be sure that certainly God gets all the credit uh, tonight. We, it, these guys have done a wonderful job, and gals have done a wonderful job of working together, collaborating, seeking the Lord's heart together. Together and trying to get that on paper and out through these instruments and through these microphones. And I think you'll, you'll sense that uh, as you listen to them tonight. So they're going to do that through the first portion. Then we're going to take a short intermission. Uh, at the intermission, obviously, you can, can go out and look at the art. There's some snacks and things. And then we're going to come back in, and it's just worship. It's just worship. That's all we're going to do is, is sing worship songs that you're used to singing uh, on Sunday mornings. And then the last piece, we're going to incorporate uh, some traditional elements, which I think are, are going to be surprising to you, but I think be a lot of fun. I think you're going to enjoy it. So it's going to be a great evening, and uh, I, I was told to talk till 635, and the red clock says it's 635, so team, I am killing enough time. If you can hear my voice behind the stage, it is time for you to come out because I don't have enough uh, <laughs> dancing moves. Here they come. Give them a round of applause.
Welcome, everybody. How are you guys doing? All right. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. That was just a start. That was just a start. You guys doing well? Man, we're really excited for tonight. I'm really excited. This has been, uh, it's been kind of a, a, I don't know, I guess seven, eighth month process of just watching the Lord put this on our heart, kind of challenge all of us as a group to work together and come up with something that uh, would be a blessing to our church, um, that would be a blessing for our teams to lead. Um, and here we are. Um, so what I'm going to do, first of all, uh, my name is Casey Taylor. I lead at Converge. That's where you would have seen me on the other end of this building in a nice little nook we like to call the chapel. So that's where I lead from, uh, from week to week. And so I'm going to go by and have these gentlemen introduce themselves. And then we're going to get, get going. It's going to be a lot of fun tonight. You guys ready? All right. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So first of all, we'll just make our way down the line. Tell us who you are and where they would have seen you lead. Uh, my name is Austin, and I lead in here in the sanctuary on Sundays. <clears throat> and I lead out at the West Campus uh, on Sundays. And I'm Jeff McIntosh and lead at the South Campus on Sundays, <laughs> specifically. Uh, my name is George, and I lead in the den in our high school ministry on Sundays and occasionally at West Campus on HSM on Wednesdays. All right, so George we need is, someone with blonde hair in this We row. do. We all look exactly we the same. This is a problem. My wife told me that. She goes, you guys all look exactly the same. One of you should shave your beard. Except George, because George can't grow a beard. Yeah, George is, but he does lead student ministry, so that makes sense. That. Just wait a few years. He'll get some poking through. <clears throat> okay, so um, anyway, yeah, but, but really and truly, like, our hope for tonight um, we don't fancy ourselves to be rock stars. We just fancy ourselves as a group full of uh, musicians and leaders who really, really care about Jesus and really care that you love Jesus and know that you are loved by Jesus. And so these songs and this record is really meant to be an encouragement to your worship experience, both at your house and in our services. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask each person about a song that they wrote, that they kind of spearheaded, and then they're gonna share a little bit about uh, the writing process and how the song came about. So we're gonna start off with the man who usually occupies this room and fills it with his glory, um, Austin Tullis. So Austin, uh, first of all, talk to us a little bit about uh, the song, where it came from, what the name of the song is, uh, and then we'll, uh, we'll get to hear it. Yeah, it's called uh, You Are Good, and it's based out of Psalm 30. And um, if you are a fan of the Enneagram, um, 
and you know anything about it. Should we do a show of hands? Any, no, I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. Yeah, no. Anyways, it doesn't matter. It's irrelevant. But I identify with this number seven, and which is uh, kind of the fun guy. Um, and and there's, there's many strengths of the seven, mind you, many strengths. Um, and a few key weaknesses, one of them being uh, we, I, I avoid pain and hurt at, at all costs and run from it. And so uh, as I'm like kind of discovering these things about myself, um, last year I'm reading through Psalm 30 and it talks a lot about pain and about hurt, um, but more it talks about how God takes your mourning and he turns it into dancing and how his joy is new in every morning, M-O-R, and, and it's this idea that it's okay, that the pain is okay, and that hurt is okay, and that it's just part of life, and that it's, it's coming at us. Like, full steam ahead, it's coming at us, and the point isn't to avoid it, and the point isn't to stiff arm it, the point is to know that we are loved by a God who can turn it into goodness. And um, even if it's not in this life, it's in the next. And it, it doesn't always look the way that I want it to look, um, but it is good. And so it's just that idea that it's this like, big picture thing that I, I don't need to avoid it. I don't need to try to sidestep it, but I can go into it and know it's coming at me, knowing that my father is a good father who has good gifts for me in the end. So I love it, man. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah you guys can clap, absolutely. <clears throat> so I, I wrote the chorus, and then I brought it to Casey, and we finished it together. Yeah, so. it was awesome. Why don't you get ready to, to cool. play it for us? Um, so what he just mentioned was something that, uh, that I want to play off a little bit. Austin is, is known to me as the chorus guy because we've written a couple of songs together, and both of them, well, the first one was Free Indeed, the song that Marcus came out and led with our team uh, at the very beginning. That was a song that he brought to all of us, and I think uh, Drew, Richard, and myself, we got a chance to write him with, I think, at the West Campus, product of uh, writing at the West Campus. But anyway, and then this song was also a song, he, he goes, hey, I got this chorus. And I was like, well, that worked out last time, so let's, let's hear it. Uh, and so it was great. So we had a good time uh, riding together, and we're excited for you guys to hear it. So here it goes. This is You Are Good. This is out of Psalm 30. Oh, 
I love it. I uh, almost got up and started dancing. No joke. Um, <clears throat> and it's okay if you guys want to get up and dance. You don't, you don't have to, but you don't not have to. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, we, we were talking a second ago just about kind of the season that we've been in. Um, and man, we, I think we wrote 20 songs. Knowing that this was going to be a five-song EP, um, we, we wrote a whole bunch of songs, but we wrote 20, and we had to narrow it down to five, which was a pretty hard process. We had a lot of writers uh, Brett Musselwhite, who a lot of you guys will know, Mitchell Travis. We had a, we had a lot of other people writing uh, together, but um, it's been a really amazing process. It's a lot of humility, working with other people, collaborating. Uh, so, Drew, uh, talk to us a little bit about the process, the writing process for you, how that goes for you, and then uh, tell us a little bit about the song that you're going to share with us. Yeah, I'd love to. Uh, so, the writing process for me uh, usually starts alone. Um, it's... Uh, it's always kind of a very vulnerable state to be in because you kind of come empty-handed um, and you're just asking the Lord for some creativity and some inspiration to be able to write from. And uh, I write a lot from a piano and um, a lot of that times is, is you just kind of sit there and you just wait and you be patient and you ask, uh, ask the Lord to give you something. And uh, thankfully, I have a two-and-a-half-year-old little something that inspires me all the time. Uh, and he went through this phase uh, a couple of months ago uh, where he would say, I want to see more. I want to see more. And whatever he was kind of into, or if I would just point out, we have a lot of deer that will come up in our backyard. And uh, anytime I would point those out to him, he would say, see more? I want to see more. Uh, and, of course, the Lord was just hammering that into my mind over and over of, man, how much more so should I be asking to see more of the Lord in my daily life? Uh, and so that was uh, several months ago, I think actually even before um, we had been asked to start writing from the Psalms. And so I just had that one little phrase, I want to see more, and we just kind of been sitting on it. Uh, and then, of course, uh, for me, the writing process is usually a journey. It doesn't happen, you know, overnight, but happens over uh, several weeks and months. And um, they had asked us to start writing from the Psalms, and so I uh, had been talking to our campus pastor uh, Matt Lance, and he and I had just been talking a lot about uh, the idea of remembrance and how much uh, remembering, you know, the promises of the Lord and remembering the faithfulness of the Lord in our lives. And uh, so I just started skimming the, the Psalms, and of course, there's a uh, fullness of ideas in the Psalms. And so I stumbled across uh, Psalm 77. I'm going to read a portion of it for you guys. It says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. With your arm redeemed your people and the children of Jacob and Joseph. Uh, and so I just kind of set on that, uh, that scripture and kind of had a pre-course idea. And I took it actually to Brett. Um, Brett and I started working on the chorus together, um, and I kind of had a melody idea after that for a verse, and I remember, Casey, you stepped in uh, with us at that point, and uh, I kind of remember there was a, the third line in the verse, you guys will see it, that first verse that uh, Casey came up with pretty quickly, and it was, it was just kind of like the, the bow on top uh, of the song, and it all just kind of came together pretty quickly at that point. Um, it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> it was. Would you guys like to hear it? <clears throat> okay, well, they're going to make their way over, and uh, man, one of the things that's really fun about this process is that, you know, I mentioned that there, it takes a lot of humility to do this, um, but we write songs, and, and ultimately our goal is not to, to feature or to be out in front and be important and made much of with these recordings, um, and so, you know, we're going to see a couple of times the writers aren't necessarily the performers, so we're just trying to find the right voice, the right feel, and so this next song is going to be led by Jessica, uh, and this is, again, a song Drew wrote, so uh, we're excited to share it with you guys, and we really hope that you like it.
I love it, guys. I love it. Uh, so some of you guys, have, have you heard that one before? Right in our services, right? You guys have, have heard a few of our, uh, our gals lead that song. So uh, it's already been a song that's uh, kind of been special to us. So, uh, so the, the next guy to my right, his name is Jeffrey. It's actually not Jeffrey. It's Jeff. Um, it's Jeffrey. It is Jeffrey. I didn't lie to you the first time. The second time I did lie to you telling you that it wasn't Jeffrey. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, uh, Jeff is what you would call a, a DTS resident here, right? That's, that's right. What is DTS? There we go. There we go. <laughs> uh, that's one of the other three guys. So uh, there's, there's four of us. That like DTS or that go to DTS? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Someone. <clears throat> DTS person. What's it like? Uh, it's great. So I, uh, I am a full-time student at DTS. Uh, should, should you be studying or writing a paper right now? Uh, probably. Probably. Why are you here? Uh, because this is, this is more important for the time being. I hope somebody from um, DTS hears this. People keep telling me grades don't matter, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to maintain a good GPA, um, but have to be here. <laughs> it's good to be here. I love it, man. Okay, so, uh, man, Jeff's been a, a real joy. Jeff leads the South Campus. Uh, yes. Jeff has been doing a lot of stuff. You would have seen him in here. You've seen him all over the place, but uh, Jeff and Whitney are, are a great couple. We're really glad that you guys are here, but glad to be um, here. this next song you wrote with, tell us who you wrote it with, tell us a little bit about it, where it came from. Uh, he wrote it with somebody very special to my heart, and he'll explain Yes, it. Yeah. likewise. So I wrote this song with Richard mm. Schaefer, who Richard. is playing drums tonight. Yep, back there. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, if you know Richard, you love him. That's why everyone claps. Uh, yeah, he's an amazing guy. So Richard and I were paired uh, one day when we were kind of pairing off to write, and uh, and we sat down together, and we hadn't really, we didn't really know each other actually at that point. Um, and both of us, he said, you know, hey, what psalm do you want to write on? And both of us, the only one that we really were thinking, man, I really want to write a song on this was Psalm 42. Did you guys say one, two, three? Say your psalm. Yes, we did. One, two, three. Psalm 42. That's what we did. Uh, but no, so we we sat down and, and we started writing, and I thought it was just great that uh, both of us wanted to wanted to write on it. But if you know Psalm 42, you know it's not particularly a happy psalm. Uh, it's 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 a psalm of lament, but there's also hope within the lament. And um, so for me personally, I when we started writing the song and and going back probably nine to twelve months. Um, was just in a season where I was really battling some severe depression. Um, and so uh, it's, this, it's a very uh, weird thing uh, to lead worship and that simultaneously be fighting for hope and fighting for joy in the midst of that. And so um, for me, that psalm had been a great, uh, just a, a psalm of hope for me uh, in, a, in a really hard season. And so um, it just kind of flowed out onto the page. Uh, honestly, I, I, it didn't take very long uh, for us to get uh, a solid chorus, uh, where David in the psalm, he actually says, um, why are you downcast, my soul? And, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him. And, and so David is preaching to his own soul in the psalm, which is just amazing. And, and there, are, there are moments uh, in the Christian life, in our walk with Christ, where that is, that's all we have. I remember Richard saying, sometimes that's all we have is just is just to say, okay, I will hope in you, I will trust in you, um, and so that's that's where we found ourselves, and out out came the song. I love it. I yeah. love it, man. Thank you for sharing. If you know Richard, he's a man of a few words a lot of times, but when he speaks, it's oftentimes pretty profound. So <clears throat> I'm glad that you guys collaborated. So why don't you guys get ready? Uh, Drew, as we mentioned earlier, uh, the whole collaborating process. He's going to sing this one for us. Jeff's going to play for us. Um, but what I thought would be a really cool opportunity right in this moment, uh, so a lot of people like to kind of know what happens and how it all happens, and so uh, I brought some pictures, so the graphics uh, communications team does a really great job taking phenomenal pictures, and I thought, let's not use those, let me use my iPhone and take some like action shots. And so what I did was I asked for our graphics team to show you some of those, so let's walk through. So, th so this is in our studio here at the church, which the Lord has been gracious enough to, to allow us to have to be able to do things like this. This is Drew standing there. I promise you he's about to sing. He, he looks bored. He's really excited. Um, <clears throat> so then let's go to the next one. That's, that's me creeping on Drew while he tries to get actual work done. And uh, I'm just there for the Instagram. Uh, so anyway, so next, so that's, yeah, so that's Jess. And so if you look, you can kind of see where the, the control room is. There's two double panes of glass, and on the other side of that, there's a bunch of knobs and buttons that I don't understand. 
that people who do understand know how to, to twist and turn and fade all the, the right things. And so Jess is in there about to lay down the song we just heard. There's Richard. Um, he, may be, he may be on a theology website arguing with other people about hermeneutics and stuff. So <clears throat> he loves to do that. Not really. And then this is Emily Hill, Drew's beautiful wife. And she uh, is getting ready to sing. And in the background, if you'll notice, because this is Art Reach, I feel like we should draw attention to our attempt at art which looks like we have made an example of a piano on the wall for all the other pianos to see. Um, we've hung it up on the wall, but I promise it's an art installation. It's meant to be there. Uh, it's not in trouble. Uh, and then I think we, maybe we have one more. Uh, and then this is Jeff uh, faking. So that microphone is not plugged in. That is Jeff responding in, in momentary, spontaneous praise and worship of Lord Jesus. Uh, while uh, I think, is that George in the background? He's about to sing. So anyway, we just thought it would be a good opportunity for you guys to get to see a little bit about what goes on, you know, whenever we're all in the, in the muck and the mire of it. But uh, we're excited to share this song with you guys. So let's hear it, guys.
celebrating these uh, these songs and these leaders. I need you guys to do something for me. Remember whose song was who. Not necessarily who leads. We talked about how that wasn't important, but we need you guys to remember who leads so that if you can't read the handwriting on the songs, you know who to blame and who to write an email about. Because those are all our individual handwriting. So if it's really illegible, we just need you guys to remember that. Anyway, so moving forward, the guy to my right, as we mentioned a second ago, is George Hornock. George leads all through the student ministries, leads all over. He's led for a lot of different places. Um, but immediately, he is our student worship pastor, which is really exciting. Um, so let me ask you a question. How has been leading students here so far been for you? Man, it's been awesome. And I want to I wanna tell you why. Um, because one of my favorite parts about students and one of the unique part about students is that I get to specifically speak into their development as both as people, but also as musicians and leaders. And so one of the cool parts about my job is that I get to, um, I get to put them on a platform and I get to help them and say, hey, you know, you have a gift here, you need to lead out here. And then I get to watch them do something that I love and feel so passionately about. And I get to watch and see how the Lord uses them both in their lives, but also in the people that they're leading uh, their lives as well. And that's just, it's such a fulfilling and like special like opportunity. And so I love yeah, it. Yeah, to clarify, what he, what he means is, is that George leads, but he does not always sing lead. So he leads his team of students to lead the other students, which is a huge task because we've got a killer band and sometimes these people have been doing it for a long time, but students, like you really do have a lot of training, you have a lot of work. So man, it's, it's, a, it's a huge ask, but it's, it's also really, really awesome. Um, and I know from leading students in the past, I used to do student ministry and lead worship for students, that it's a heavy time, man. There's a lot of things in the lives of these students that you really have to kind of bear. And because of the volume of students, especially at a church like ours, with, a, with you know, we've been blessed with a lot of influence and a lot of students you have a lot of that weight. So in light of that, this next song, which is one of my favorite songs through the whole process, I, this was uh, a song from a, a while back, um, and I've loved the song for a long time, but it's a heavy song. It comes from a heavy place. So why don't you share a little bit about the song, uh, how it came about, but just your heart behind it too. Yeah, so um, this song actually came about, a, man, like almost eight months ago. I mean, we're, we're coming around that time. And so... Um, it came about really organically. We, Jeff, Brett, uh, and I think, and then me, and then I think you came in a little bit later on the song. Uh, it came about really organically. And I, I want to read the psalm, or a portion of the psalm, um, because I think that if I could anchor this song in Scripture in, in two verses, this is what it would be. It would be, Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for there is faithful love with the Lord, and with him is redemption in abundance and he will redeem Israel for all its iniquities. And so when we started writing this song, this line came to us, and it was just this simple line of, I will wait for you. And so as we begin kind of studying this psalm, um, we just kind of started going, okay, what, what does that mean? What, what are we waiting for? What was, what was Israel waiting for? And in a way, at that point, they were waiting for the Messiah, and now the Messiah has come, and, and so now we're in a season uh, as the church waiting for the return of our Savior, Jesus. And um, so f for me personally, this was actually not my favorite song for a long time. Yeah, talk, I, talk to us about that. You, you mentioned that to me the other day about how you, this song kind of had to grow on you, but kind of talk me through where the song developed in your heart. Yeah, so we, we ended up writing it and I, I did the demo for it and uh, we put it in the Dropbox and just kind of forgot about it. And it was there for a couple of months and then it was time to kind of really lean into the writing process again. We did all that and then um, it came about to choosing songs. We were supposed to choose five songs. Hey, these are the songs that I think should go on this record. 
And I remember listening through them all and hearing that one and just going, nah, nah. <laughs> and uh, we get through and I, we kept getting feedback of like, hey, this song is great, we should do this song. And I kept wondering why, like why are we doing this song? Like I just don't, I don't see it. And then I was asked to sing on it and I was like, okay, this is like a kind of a challenge because I, I just don't, I don't get this. Like this is gonna be hard for me to like get into this. And I remember, um, it was back in January, very beginning, um, and I was sitting at the piano in kind of the other part of the building, and I was playing through this song, and I was about to go in and do the final vocal on it, and um, still was kind of wrestling with it, and I remember this moment, it was a season where, um, one, a lot of students um, in kind of our ministry, like I knew were having a really hard time, and there was a lot of heaviness there, and then two, um, it was a season where my wife and I were actually coming out of a season of a lot of heaviness in our own lives. And it was kind of like this moment of I was playing through this, man, and I was realizing this is my story. Um, this is our story. Like, we are the people who call out for mercy and, and, and are, are so low, and we are a people who are waiting for, for God until he, he brings back Jesus. And, um, and so you'll hear it in the song, but the song just progresses. And every time we sing that chorus, there's, a, there's kind of two favorite lines that I have. One of them is, I will wait for you, I'll wait for you till the morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, is done. And then I'll wait for you till the morning comes. And, and that's kind of the catch line. And then there's another line in the bridge, or in kind of the third section of the song, that says, your promise is worth the waiting. And everything changes every time you sing that, I will wait for you, I'll wait for you, after verse one, after the second time we, second verse, and then after that bridge section, every time the meaning of that chorus changes. And it's our story of finding hope even in the darkest of places, even in the hardest of places. Um, and so I just remember going into the studio and just going, man, God, you have given me such a new meaning behind this song. And this song is, 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 is hopeful and, it, and it's good and it's encouraging. And I don't know. <clears throat> well, man, we're gonna hear it. Would you play it for us? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Um, so I, I had something planned, but I think I don't wanna do that. I'm just gonna let you guys hear this song. So we'll get to that here in just a second. But um, <clears throat> Man, I, one of the things that, that really is special about writing music for those who don't write music um, and for those who express in many ways, this week is an art reach weekend. That's what we're here to celebrate is art. Um, but you know that the opportunity to express yourself in some form or fashion, in some medium, is really important for sort of coping and dealing with things. And I think especially in light of who God is, we have this opportunity together as a church to use songs like this uh, to sort of collectively exhale and express uh, uh, an emotion we all can uh, relate to. So let's hear this song together.
So great. Uh, I want to take a second and just thank the band. We all are just sitting here enjoying it. That's Kyle over there on the keys. Kyle. Mm. Davis. Repping the, the hat. The hat. Thea. Lovely, the cello. Richard, our music director and drummer. Chike. Slapping the bass. Trevor, shredding, and then the coiners, Michael and Jessica Coiner. So wonderful. Um, so it's my turn. Casey's going to sing his song. Yeah. So I get to interview you. Okay. Yeah. Switch chairs. If you were trapped on a desert island, <laughs> and you could have the choice between Coffee. one person. Wait, no, no. Oh. Wait. One person. Would you choose A, Dr. Cody McQueen, or B, Dr. Bill Egner? I feel like Bill might be able to build us a way to get off that island. So, I mean, for, for kicks, probably Cody, but if I wanted to get for off kicks. the island. <clears throat> but if I wanted to get off the island, I might ask Bill. I'm taking neither, I'm taking Rob, the sound guy. That is a sound decision. We would survive and then some. So, okay, all right. Yeah, so. Love it. Anyways, so about the song. So you guys need to know that um, I feel like every, um, every race or movement or culture, whatever it takes, a uh, pace setter. And I would 100% say that Casey Taylor is our pace setter, that he is a, a true songwriter that loves the craft and he puts the work in that I, Every day it feels like he's writing a new song and it makes me get myself into gear to want to write more songs. And so I just want to publicly say thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you for saying that. Thanks. <clears throat> um, so you wrote the yeah. song. Yeah. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah, so um, thank you for saying that, seriously. Um, so yeah, so this song is a song that uh, really came from uh, you know, being in ministry, and these guys know, it's, there's a lot of things that you, you try to tackle. You know, you try to, to love on your people well. You try, you know, if we have families, you try to love your families well. And oftentimes, um, I got into a habit over a season of trying to make sure that I, I didn't skip reading because I, I had been through a dry season of, of getting in and out of the rhythm of, of reading every day. And, uh, and I got through this. I remember I, I hit this year mark of, where I had just read and spent time with the Lord every day. And then it hit me like, 
like reading is, has really been good for my soul, but, but there's so much a part of me that just wants to sit with Jesus sometimes. Um, and being in ministry sometimes, we do a lot of things and we work for Jesus. You know, we, our hope is, is that we're, we're doing it with the right heart. Um, but devotionally for myself, I remember, I remember sitting down with the Psalms through this project and, and coming across Psalm 27. And it says, um, if I can open this up, um, it's, you know, a lot of you guys might have heard the old praise and worship song. Um, uh, well, I can't even remember how it goes. But it's something like, I want to dwell in your presence, right? But it's this part in this Psalm 27 that says, one thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. And I just started thinking about how, man, that's really the fulfillment of all of this stuff. Like, that's really where I want to be, is someday, after all of the stuff that we've done, the life that I've lived, I just want to look at Jesus, and I just want to just take in his majesty. Um, and rather than it being uh, sort of a solemn declaration, I also have come to love declarative, really celebratory songs. Um, and so I really, my hope with this song was to be a declarative sort of like, one thing I'll ask, one thing I'll seek is to dwell with you eternally. Uh, and just for the church to have a song to celebrate and just to sing out that that's what we want. Um, it's not about, you know, just coming here every week and, and singing songs about Jesus. It's that, that it's about him. It's about this communion. It's about looking at him and, and being with him. And so, so, yeah, so I just wanted to give a voice to that desire in hopes that maybe someone else would feel that and we could worship to God together. Awesome. Love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. While he's getting ready, uh, we have some thank yous. Uh, first, the Academy. Thank them. <laughs> so, <laughs> It's a little Oscar joke, yeah. Hold on, I wrote on my hand. The communications team, also known as Susan's Kids, uh, they did all of the artwork, and they made the words happen on the screen, and all that stuff. They are awesome. They are the best in the biz, 100%. Um, audio, visual, lighting, uh, Rob's team, uh, Douglas, uh, Kevin. They make uh, all of this look and sound great. And then, um, on our hand. Uh, oh, Will Hunt and Reese Murphy, they were our producers in the album. And so if you uh, buy a CD or if you stream on Spotify, no judgment, either way, then you can hear these songs. And Will and Reese, it was their minds um, that helped these songs come to life. And so just awesome guys. And then, uh, and we really want to thank uh, Cody, our lead pastor, and Jerry, our elder of worship. They've really pushed this along, and they went to bat for us, and they encouraged us, and they challenged us, and so uh, their fingerprints are all over this. And so, um, yeah, we are just really, really thankful for tonight and for you guys coming, and uh, um, here is my song of my strength. One 
Well, there's uh, Lift My Eyes. You've gotten uh, behind the music, and thank you uh, guys for sharing your heart and uh, certainly being vulnerable. They've put in a lot of hard work uh, to get to this point. Thank you, team, for playing, but the night is not over. Uh, as I told you, we're going to have a short intermission right now, and uh, we're going to come back and sing some songs that will probably be a little bit more familiar to you. I hope these songs definitely become familiar to you uh, as we begin to sing them as a congregation. But we're going to sing some things that are familiar to you and let you express your desire to the Lord and your heart for Him to declare the things that Casey was just talking about as we lift our eyes together. So we're going to give you about 15 minutes to go out, and uh, they have some stuff like how Hats like Davis Dodd is repping over here, uh, some hats, some shirts, some CDs. The guys brought me a CD because I still have a CD player, and uh, but you can get it downloaded on Spotify and iTunes and all those kind of things. All of that stuff is out there. We have some uh, snacks and things, so we're going to take a short intermission, and then we're going to come right back in here and pour our hearts out and lift our eyes to God. So take a quick break. Stop. 
chapel who sing of the great things that our God has done as we lift our voices together. Blessing. 
never gonna let you're never gonna let me down you're never gonna let you're never gonna let me Amen. Let's bow our heads together. God, every once in a while we have those moments that we get this extra clear glimpse into your kingdom. God, that we get to come together as your people. God, the ones that you created. God, the ones that you knew by name from the beginning of time. God, we come and we, we, we fill this room from all different walks and all different places. God, some of us came in here with joy upon joy and some of us came in a low place. And God, you meet us where we are that we can bring our doubts and we can bring our fears and know that you are a good God. God, that we don't have to run from pain and trouble, but you meet us where we are and you lift us up. Throughout history, you have been faithful. God, you will always be faithful. And right now, in this room, in this moment, you are faithful. And it's not just a cliche, it's not just something that we say, but it's something that we know in the core of our being to be true. God, you are worthy. God, you are so worthy of, of this night and these songs and so much more. May what we say and sing, God, may it be a reflection of our heart. God, show yourself. God, meet us where we are. God, lift us up.
puts things back together. Amen.
Amen. Thank you, team. Thank you, traditional choir. Uh, thank you for uh, the team. Uh, praise God. Can we just say praise God? I mean, awesome. Uh, I'm, I, I was thrilled. This is something that I told you that we've been looking forward to uh, for a long time. And, you know, obviously we sang all night about the hope that we have in Jesus. Uh, but what struck me as we're sitting here, and, and especially uh, watching uh, the leaders here on, on the platform and then watching the, the choir come in, uh, the church is the hope of the world. It, it, it really is. And it stands and falls by the Spirit of God and the leaders that he raises up. And if our church is in the hands of these leaders up in the choir and here on the, on the platform, then praise God. I am so thankful for our church. Our church is providing the hope for our city. Yeah. And that's you. So thank you for coming tonight and, and bringing your heart. Thank you to all of you that put in so much work, lights, video, sound. Uh, we've got the best. we got the best in the world. Uh, and I'm not kidding when I say that. Uh, but this wouldn't be possible uh, without our elder who is over worship, and that is Jerry Daniel. So Jerry, why don't you come on up? Oh. Yeah. He's going to... Uh, as Austin said, uh, Jerry, Jerry certainly oversaw this whole project and uh, is one of the elders at our church. We have 10 of them, uh, but I was going to let him close down the night for us. So he's a proud father of uh, everything that happened tonight, so you can close us down. Absolutely. Um, I can just think of one word right now that I want to say, and it's, <sighs> uh, I'm reminded in Romans chapter 8, verse 26, it talks about when we can't express something that's too deep that the Spirit helps us, and I feel that tonight is, it's too deep to express my gratitude and what we've been able to experience tonight, and uh, I'm an old guy. This has been one of the privileges of my life to be able to work with these, uh, these young guys as they lead us into the future. Uh, they've told me, and, and you saw that tonight, that this is about glorifying God, and I think they did it. So... One quick thing, you will want to express your uh, happiness and joy along with them, so I'm going to let them sort of leave the platform now. They're going to head out to the great room so you can uh, go visit with them and, and tell them how much that they blessed your spirit, because I know they did that. But one more reminder, um, there's something out there called swag. <laughs> so, go to hell in this a second. So we have t-shirts also. It is Art Reach Weekend. We've painted everything. <laughs> everything is painted up. So you're going to enjoy the gallery. You're going to be able to buy some merchandise out there. But really, it's here to celebrate as a family. This whole weekend is about, I think of it this way, the mind's attention, the heart's affection expressed. And that's what Art Reach is all about. So let me close with that thought tonight as you uh, head into joy into the night. Let's pray together. Our Father, I am grateful for the reminder that words that you helped men pen 3,000 years ago came again alive tonight because you are a living and active God. We thank you that your evidence is still among us where we live today. We look forward to the future with you, but Lord, we praise you tonight for who you are. We glorify you because you deserve all the glory and honor. You are worthy. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed. Thank you. So, so good to me. When I felt no words, you paid it all for me. You have been so, so good.